So, you want to make some armor, but you don't know where to start. <laughs> well, you start with ideas. Where do you get ideas? Well, a lot of people have plenty of ideas in their heads already, but if nothing else, you can get ideas from uh, all the historical information out there, what people actually wore for armor, for that matter. Uh, of course, there's all kinds of fantasy reference out there. We've got video games, we've got movies, we've got graphic novels, all the things you can, whatever you can imagine, it's already out there. You can get ideas from that, r replicate them, make them your own, do what you want with them. Uh, what we're here to talk about is making leather armor and how I go about doing that and how I've done that for the last 11 years. And where I start, I start with the ideas. Once I've got my idea, I generally will do a drawing of that idea. Drawings, all, all manner of drawings. Get an idea, make a drawing. That kind of thing. Get an idea, make a drawing. Once you get the drawing, you need to make a template. Now you can use uh, this kind of material here. I mean, if you've got a bunch of file folders that, that somebody was going to throw away, you could use that. This is what I've got my templates in, but uh, uh, pop bottle box, pop can boxes, beer boxes, cereal boxes, that kind of stuff, that's what we use. And then you get something like this a template now if you'll notice these templates are folded in half and that's that's how I start I make a, a symmetrical template by folding it in half punching the holes now I've got a template I can use again and again or, or just for the one time to trace on my leather What, we, uh, what we're going to be using is we're going to be using leather. We've got some different kinds of leather here. We've got chrome tan leather, which is a, it's a very flexible sort of leather. It's about, it's a little less than an eighth of an inch thick. It's pretty sturdy stuff. We use that for, for uh, war dresses and stuff like that. Here we've got the, uh, we've got the heavy saddle skirting all the way down to our are thinner pieces that are about an eighth of an inch thick that we use for straps and that kind of stuff. Here's a piece of armor that's cut out after it's been put on the template. Now, some of the tools that you're going to need are a rawhide mallet, a nice sharp utility knife, that you can change the blades in and get nice new ones. A decent pair of scissors. These don't cost very much. Uh, they're, uh, I've cut 3 16 inch leather with these. These go through this like butter. These are Fiskars. You can get them at Walmart, hobby stores. This pair only costs about 5 to $7. Just a regular old cutting board. You can pick them up at the dollar store. Uh, discount stores are not really expensive. Works great. That's what I use to pound my holes through. Some of these mini punches. The mini punches that you can change the heads on and get all kinds of different sizes. Uh, I recommend uh, they're not that expensive. I think they're about ten dollars for a set. I, get, I have the mini and the maxi punches. As well as some flat thong punches uh, for uh, just making slotted holes. I've also got a big uh, maxi punch for the larger diameters. Those go up to like uh, a little over, I think, quarter inch or better so for big holes for lacing. Uh, you need a rivet setter. It's just a, a got the curved in there for setting your rivets. Keep your, let's have a better look at that. Okay, some kind of awl to put 
push through your holes. Sometimes your holes shrink, your rivets don't fit. Something to buff your edges. And I also use this for sculpting and making uh, scars in the leather to make it look weathered. This is a uh, just a regular old uh, uh, like a clay modeling tool that I've had for years. You can pick them up in hobby stores. Uh, Walmart probably has them yeah, in a plastic version would probably even work. Just something to buff your edges down. So they're not sharp. Okay, so you're also you're also going to want a uh, a good steel rule for cutting straight edges. And well, and also making uh, measurements, accurate measurements. Uh, you can, if you've got a, a piece of metal with a straight edge, you can actually use that. Uh, I've got a nice big long one for doing long pieces. Uh, that works really great. Uh, so those are those are the main tools that you're going to need to get the job done. Uh, some of the things that we have that we use are uh, we've got rivets uh, and they come in bags of a hundred or bags of a thousand I've got a, I've got my uh, little uh, setup here with all the main uh, the ones that I use the most I have the most of that kind of thing so they're easy access uh, I've got all kinds of different sizes of belt buckles the main buckles I use are these utility buckles for armor and they're just they're they're fairly inexpensive. They're some of the the least expensive buckles, but they're the most effective in my opinion. I think. I sew like pieces it. together sometimes with this uh, wax coated thread. It's braided thread. Uh, our samurai armor uh, and other types of Asian armor uh, we uh, put together with cord braided polypropylene cord that's uh, UV resistant so it doesn't fade in the sun if you're out and about. Okay. Um, one of the other things that, that I forgot to mention for tools is having an anvil uh, or uh, I like to have a good vice grip. This one has an anvil built into it and I've got some attachments that go into my vice grip that I can uh, uh, work on helmets or deep things that I can't get to with a, a regular anvil. So that's those are always handy. This one, this is one that I had out in my garage that I brought in. Um, they're not that expensive. I think you can pick them up for about twenty bucks, brand new at like uh, Harbor Freight or Walmart. Probably has them. <coughs> okay, so finally, what we're gonna need is um, uh, some some dye. Uh, we gotta have dye, and I, I use, most of my stuff is black. So I, I, I have a big old gallon of black dye, but they sell it in the smaller, smaller containers. It comes with applicators. I like to use a, 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 what is it, a rabbit skin dauber, big old piece of rabbit skin to put it on big pieces. That works pretty good. And then uh, last but not least, we need a, a finish. And we use the, we use the super sheen. The super sheen finish. It's uh, it's uh, it works pretty good. It gives it a nice uh, waterproof finish. So uh, these are the basic supplies that you'll need to get started and make yourself a set of armor. So if you uh, if you like this video, hit that like button down there and go ahead and subscribe because there's more videos to come. And we'll see you next time around. Have a good one.